as the fight continues and the drama builds and builds and builds, you start to see the physical manifestations. Their faces become red. There's a cut on Mancini's ear. And then Kim's face has become a grotesque mask by that 13th round. This is the challenger, Duke Duke Kim. You may not have heard of him before. You will remember him today, win or lose. In the 14th round, Ray came out. And he was determined this was going to be it. And he went right to Kim. The left hook kind of stunned him. I hit him. Another left hook had stunned him. And then threw the right hand right down the middle. And made him on his chair. And he went down. Referee Richard Green rightly stopped the fight. Nobody thought that Kim was badly hurt. I felt that he was, if anything, dehydrated. His head hit not 10 feet away from me, and his eyes are open. And I don't know if it was my imagination, but to me, I saw his pupils dilate. I was just so happy because it was such a grueling fight, and so happy that it was over. Nobody knew what was happening to Dooku Kim. The pupils were dilated, and his pulse was slowing down to a nothing. And all the signs were there that he was in trouble. You know, once he just kind of faded away and started to fall off the stool. The stretcher was sitting right below me. So the fella on my left, and I reached down and got the stretcher and put the stretcher up in the ring. We had to get out of the way, so when they carried him out in the stretcher, they carried him right in front of us. And that time we just thought you know maybe he had a concussion or something i wasn't sure how bad he was hurt i didn't know if it was exhaustion because we hadn't had anybody seriously get hurt in nevada for maybe 50 years at desert springs hospital neurosurgeon lonnie hammergren awaited kim's arrival i knew he was in trouble had trouble breathing and he was comatose we found, just as I expected, the blood clot, a torn vein inside the dura on the right side of his head caused bleeding, and that bleeding caused high pressure. After I completed surgery, I examined him again and examined him several times after that, and I never saw any real responsiveness. He was sore, man. I remember putting him in bed, laying him down and going for ice bags. And we just had the, had the bed on both sides everywhere, just packed with ice. My hands were swollen, my eyes swollen up. I'm laying on my bed. My mother got an ice pack on one eye, ice pack on the other hand. My sister's holding it on one eye, and I got it on the other hand. And my mother's sobbing over me. Boom Boom Mancini was preparing to celebrate his victory by attending Frank Sinatra's performance at Caesar's Palace that night when he learned of the severity of Duke Ku Kim's condition. Dave Wolf comes into the room with Murphy Griffith and said, Ray, it, it don't look good. And they said, his brain's bleeding and that he lapsed into a coma and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to come out of it. It was as though I had hit Ray in the chest with a two by four. He just gulped and stared at me with his mouth open. And I said, Ray, this is something you're going to have to deal with. The next day in a ballroom of the Tropicana Hotel, Mancini's parish priest led a mass said in Kim's honor. Father O'Neill did a wonderful uh, uh, eulogy about God hasn't planned. This guy came in to win this fight. He came in a dream and a goal. Who's to say it could have been either one? Why him? You know, not Ray. And that is what really, really bothered me. That really tortured me that night. It could have been me. He went from being literally on top of the world in the fight game to feeling guilty about something that he certainly was not responsible for. But the reality was that he was in the ring with a man that was not going to make it. I was looking down at my hands going, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe that 
that happen that somebody's life or death at, the, at my, you know, because of my, of what I did with my hands. My faith in God is the only thing that carried me through that. I said my prayers that, you know, God, please help me to find the answers, whatever, at least I need the answers. Help me to find the peace, let me find peace in this. As Kim lay in a coma, a representative of the Korean government arrived from Los Angeles. Later, Kim's mother flew in from halfway around the world. She looks so, so sad, so pathetic, so all alone. Here she is in this foreign country, can't speak the language. She was really such a totally sympathetic figure. The doctor in charge told me that, medically speaking, his brain is dead. She began to realize that the thing is not going in the right way. Three days after she arrived, she asked me to ask the doctor to disconnect the life supporting system. The body of Duke Koo Kim will be flown to Korea today for burial. The young boxer died during the night after doctors declared him legally dead and disconnected his life support system. The death watch ended November 17th. At the consent of his mother, Kim's kidneys were transplanted, but plans to remove his heart were halted when the intended recipient said it would be difficult to live with the publicity. Kim's fiance, who was three months pregnant with his son, would marry him posthumously. I prayed to God so that Kim would live. I really hoped to see him again. So his death was a huge shock to me. I wandered for a while. It took almost one year to feel somewhat easy on Kim's death. Kim was my best friend. Koreans felt a lot of pity for him then. They felt sorry that he did not win and wished that he would have come back alive even if he had lost. Many people were depressed. I went there when they were lowering the coffin into the grave. Because of his death, South Korea has become well known among the nations. And his death showed Koreans tenacity, courage, and self-confidence to America. General MacArthur once said the Korean was the finest fighting man in the world. Once I saw the fight, I kind of saw what MacArthur meant. Duke Koo Kim died that day because they fought at a level where somebody was gonna die. Only 17 months after losing his brother, Mancini struggled to make sense of Kim's death. It was a great win, it was a great win. It's a great fight, a great win. But after that, there was nothing good about it, nothing. It just took it all away from me. The joy, the passion, all that was gone. Raymond wouldn't talk about it for the longest time. It was in the late 90s, maybe, I, before I even heard him say that name. Two and a half months after the tragic incident, Mancini was in Italy for his next fight when Kim's mother committed suicide in South Korea. Beyond her grief, she was despondent over a family struggle for her son's $20,000 purse and $5,000 death benefit. His mother was so frustrated and sad to see that kind of situation. I lost my son, but you are fighting over the money. I'm so sad. I'll go my way. I will take my own life. The stories about his mother committing suicide just kept the ongoing story of Kim's death blowing in our faces long after it might otherwise have subsided. 